So I decided that I would see if um, I can make ChatGPT improve upon itself. So I created this script that allows ChatGPT to create scripts and execute them. I know that sounds like um, basically opening my system up to a virus, but I was curious to see what ChatGPT would do. So here's the script. I'm going to run through it quickly. We have two functions, create file, which takes a file name and content and writes it. Execute subprocess, which takes an input arguments and inputs a subprocess to call and it calls it and then returns the results. Okay, so then here we load the .env, which is here where I've got my OpenAI API key. And then I create some starting messages. You are a self-improving AI. And I say, you must explore the idea of self-improving. You have the ability to save and execute Python scripts. And the resulting output will be fed back into the chat to continue it. Decide what you want to create and call the necessary tools. It should ultimately lead to improve your abilities based on the feedback you get from the script execution. Think of ways you can learn about your environment, gain functionality, improve, and most importantly, get smarter. Don't assume any modules are installed. You may need to install them. You can use the subprocess module to run the pip command. You can also use the subprocess module to run the Python command. And then I have a separate message which I do append uh, at, at various times, prompting chat to proceed to improve yourself further. I'm using the function calling that OpenAI allows for the chat message. Um, and I have two functions defined, create file with the parameters file name and content, and execute subprocess with the parameters arguments and the subprocess to call, for example, Python, pip, etc. Now I have my execute function call function, which is responsible for taking in a call from chat, a tool call, and executing um, the function. Now there will be two returns. It'll be create file or execute subprocess. And depending upon what it is, it's passed in. Remember that the response from a tool call returns a JSON string. So here what we do is we take the arguments, content, and file name, and then create the file and pass that in. And then we execute the subprocess here, and we take the arguments and the subprocess, and we execute it. We call the execute subprocess function from above. Now here we go. Here's the meat and potatoes of it. Start chat. We create a response object and which uh, tells chat about our messages, which is our, our messages array. Where is it here? We have a messages array, right, which is blank to start with. Now we continuously append to that array. So we, um, so then we get the response from chat. So it'll at first start with the two messages that I sent in above, which is about telling chat what to do. Then we will get tool calls back and we will loop through each tool call and we will call the execute function call function with the tool call that's returned. And then we append that to our messages array. Up here we append our assistant message. So what the system returned, we append that to the messages array. So that every time this is called, the messages array is growing. So chat has a context of what it's already done. Next, we append the proceed message, which is, if you recall, um, this. Proceed to improve yourself further. If I don't do this, chat seems to, uh, GPT seems to um, finish and decide that it's done improving. But this, on the other hand, prompts it to continue improving. And finally, an infinite loop we call start chat. So now let's give it a whirl and see how GPT will self-improve. And I have no idea what it's going to do. 
I've run it a few times and every time it does something different. Okay, let's try executing the script now and see what it does. Okay, so the first thing it does is it creates a script that analyzes the environment. So it's trying to get the lay of the land to understand what uh, the environment looks like around it. So that's very interesting and it makes a lot of sense. This is how uh, chat GPT will understand what are the working parameters of the current environment. Okay, so what's it done now is it's created a bubble sort algorithm comparison. I guess it seems to be aimed at, what's it doing here? It seems to be aimed at assessing the capacity of my system. So it's going to time how long certain bubble sort, certain algorithms take. And keep in mind, anything that's printed here will be fed back into GPT. So it's learning about its environment. Okay, so now what it appears to have created is a basic data analysis script. So what exactly is the purpose of this? It's creating some fake products, calculating their average, counting the categories. So what is, so let's see what its logic is here. We'll create a Python script that performs basic data analysis tasks on a simple data set represented in, as a list of dictionaries. The script will calculate the average value of a numeric field and count occurrences of specific categories. Okay, so interesting. I'm not sure how this is self-improvement, but I mean, it's given itself something to do. Let's see what happens next. Okay, basic NLP. It seems to have proceeded with some natural language processing. So it's doing something here. So it's tokenizing some, this is interesting. So what is this saying it's gonna do? We'll implement a Python script to take sample text, tokenize it into words, remove common stop words, including a predefined list, and calculates the frequency of each word. This exercise will provide insights into text processing and analysis. Okay, so now it's created another script called Feedback Analyzer. I'm not sure what this is going to do. It seems to be creating a quick sort implementation now. Okay, so it's implementing the quick sort function. So as you can see, chat is not doing anything profound in its self-improvement. But I wonder what would happen if I ran the whole entire thing from the start again. So now it's analyzing some time series. Okay, so it's not really doing anything deep now. It's just continuing to try some different experiments. So let's see what happens if we run it again. So I'm going to interrupt the execution here and I'm going to delete all the scripts that it created. Everything except my main. Yes. And I'm going to try running it again. Let's see what happens this time. Okay, so first thing it's doing is creating a list packages, which lists all the pip. Um, so it's funny, it's calling its own subprocess. So even though we're calling this in a subprocess, it has created a function that calls a subprocess again. So it's doing pip list, which returns the list of installed packages. Okay, so now it seems to be calling the subprocess pip install scikit-learn. So it's installing a package right now onto my system. And um, we'll see what it's doing soon and what its, what its intention is. And now it's installing matplotlib. Now it's installing spacey. I'm not sure why it's doing this as separate pip calls. It could have strung them all together, but that's okay. So it seems to want to do something to do with natural language processing again. So let's see what happens. Oh, it's an upgrading pip. Interesting. It's installing, it's attempting to install the same things again. Okay, for some reason it doesn't think that it successfully installed these packages. So now it's gonna be stuck in sort of a loop, I think. Okay, so it just did a data analysis, which um, 
popped up a chart for me. Interesting. Age and the name of people. Cool. Now it seems to have died probably because of that um, plotting of the uh, matplotlib image. Okay, let's try, what did it do here? Data analysis example. Yeah, okay, so it did a plot and it showed the, it showed the plot here, which means it didn't return anything and the system, I'm not sure why, it, but it failed here. Let's, let's, uh, we can explore that later, but it might be because there was no uh, return value here. So it, I'm gonna fix my script. If only if there is content, proceed. Now I'm going to delete the packages. Okay, I just made a change to my main script so that if the content is not, if there is no content returned, then this would be none. It's this string operation is failing. So we're only going to print the return if there is a return to print. So let's see what chat's going to do next. Okay, once again, it's doing a probe of the environment. So it's seeing what's installed, pip, list, um, and the Python version. And that's being returned back into chat. So let's see what it does next. Okay, it recreated the file again for some reason. So now it's installing requests so that it can start to do HTTP requests. So this is interesting. Chat is going to try and reach out into the world. So it's creating a script called fetch weather. What does this do? Uh -huh. Well, it's using open weather map but it needs an API key. So this is going to fail. It's going to fetch, try and fetch the weather for London. So it's interesting that in this particular instance, though, chat is trying to reach out into the world. So it's trying to improve its abilities. The API is trying to improve its abilities. Now it's going to, oh, it's correcting the, the file. Again, it's got the same issues because there's no API key. Okay, now it's moved on. It's installing the pandas library. Okay, once again, it's gonna try and do some data analysis. So this is just an experiment. It seems to me that um, GPT doesn't really wanna break out of the box and improve its functionality. It seems to want to just kind of give itself some more tools, but not really improve upon the AI. So I just wanted to see if chat would somehow come up with some crazy way of improving the AI's capabilities. So let's see what it did for data analysis. So try to read a file called data.csv, even though that file doesn't exist. Now, interestingly, I've given it the ability to create its own data.csv if it wanted to, but it didn't take that step. Anyway, this is a fun experiment, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video if you found it entertaining or useful, and please don't forget to subscribe.